Okay, thank you uh, again to the organizers and uh, for inviting me here to speak. I wish I could be there. Um, yeah, so again, uh, live from my basement, it's cohomological field theories from gauged linear sigma models. And now it's part two. And uh, again, this is based on joint work with Bumshig Kim, uh, who was my collaborator and friend uh, who passed away last year. And um, he had a great, uh, great amount to do with everything I'm going to be telling you today. And uh, it was an extension of previous work with Chiocon Fontenine, Guerra, Kim again, and Shoemaker. All right. So, so uh, again, uh, this was the this was the outline. GLSMs. We talked about what those are yesterday, and I'll just give a one slide review today. We talked about what cohomological field theories were, and I'll give a one slide review today. So then I'll move straight. I decided to summary of results um, or history of kind of what's been done for where GLSMs meet co-FTs. And the majority of today, we will talk about uh, the construction uh, due to myself and Kim, uh, this, this most recent construction which is really an extension of, of previous construction. Okay. So uh, just recall, GLSMs or gauge linear sigma models really consisted of five pieces of data. So we had a, a, a C vector space V, um, a group gamma in GLV, which is linearly reductive, a character of a surjective character of that group. And this new was another character, uh, which is called a good lift of theta. So I have another character, I have two characters. Uh, this character has something to do with R, what was called R charge. So simplifying this data, let me recall for you that this. This is essentially the data of a GIT quotient with a function. Oh, and I'm missing the fu function in this, <laughs> in this data. There should be another one here. Somehow uh, W didn't make it to the list. Okay, so really you can just think about it as this data of a GIT quotient mapping to uh, with, with a function, with a global function. Uh, the GIT quotient is by the kernel of this chi and um, the stability is given by the restriction of this new to this kernel. So what this additional group gamma does is it, it, it gives you a C star extension of G it's called R charge. And uh, this new is called a good lift to this, to this, uh, to this extension. And then uh, you require that this is a Deline Mumford stack and that the critical locus of this function inside this Deline Mumford stack is proper. Okay. So that was the that was that was the definition of a GLSM. We, we talked about examples last time. Then uh, we had cohomological field theories. So again, the data was a graded vector, a, a graded C vector space called H. Um, and for example, we talked, we discussed gromov witten theory where, where H was the cohomology of some space, okay? Uh, a super commutative 
pairing and gromov witten theory. That was the cup product pairing. A unit. So just a distinguished element in this space. And then uh, the major piece of data, which I will uh, spend the majority of the time constructing for you is, uh, is this collection of maps for every uh, G, R, and D, we get a map from the R tensor power of this uh, vector space to the cohomology of MGR, uh, MGR bar. So the moduli of curves of genus G with R marked points. And then um, the, the, there's, there's some compatibility between this data based on um, the natural uh, maps between different versions of, of this moduli space. So for example, I can add a marking. If I have an extra marking, I can glue two markings together. So if I have two markings on a curve, I might glue them together. And then I need some compatibility between uh, the maps of these moduli spaces and these maps. So that's a cohomological field there. All right, uh, so I just wanna tell you the history of cohomological field theories for GLSMs. So uh, this was started in the case where G was finite. This was called the quantum singularity by Fon Jarvis and Ruan, G finite, quantum. Singularity in 2013, and, and this is called uh, FJRW theory. As uh, the idea for this goes back to Witten. Uh, in, in 2016, uh, Polish Chuck and Vaintro did a purely algebraic version of the, of the above. And importantly, uh, using matrix factorizations So this map, gamma GRD, is derived from uh, Fourier Mukai transform by a matrix factorization in this version. And uh, this is the construction that uh, we follow most closely that all the inspiration comes from. All right, uh, in 2018, there is also a version of the above using uh, cosection local cosection localization. And uh, they also have some plus some plus some GLSMs. Some. Uh, in 2018, Don Jarvis and Ruan revisited uh, this problem for general GLSMs. So general GLSMs, but uh, this H is restricted to uh, classes from the GIT quotient. So roughly, if you think about the cohomology of some kind of hypersurface in this GIT quotient, it has more, it, it may have, you know, what's called primitive cohomology or more cohomology, right? And um, they created these maps gamma GRD, but only, only define them on uh, classes pulled back from the ambient uh, GIT quotient. 
So this was called the narrow sector case. This is what they called the narrow sector case. Uh, so then, um, together with uh, Chiocan Fontenine, Guerra, Kim, and Shoemaker, we addressed the broad sector case using matrix factorizations again, uh, but only for convex high hybrid models. Uh, but the good news is that this actually includes uh, this includes uh, quantum singularities and romov witten theory. Uh, nonetheless, um, as you vary from as you vary this theta, it it will not include all the variations of theta. So it, so a, a general description was desired. And so with him in 2020, we produced this general description, general GLS and endurance. Any questions? Okay, so it's just history. So I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll focus on some of uh, some of the results, my own results here. So uh, this is, again, this is Chiacon Fontenine, myself, where I am Shoemaker. This is from that 2018 paper, is that uh, enumerative GLSM invariants recover uh, FJR W and Gromov Witten theory. And then to be specific, they recover FJR W theory as defined by Polish Chuck Vaintrobe. And they recover really as a generalization. And then but gromov witten theory was compared uh, using the cosection localized virtual cycle. And the reason uh, I tell you this is because uh, Bumshig and Junsuk, oh, Bumshig Kim and John uh went on to um, compare this to the usual Gromov Witten theory. So they proved that the cosection localized. So this is kind of parenthetical, but this result came afterwards. So <laughs> uh, because now this is the usual Gromov Witten theory, and that, that, that's what they proved. So the cosection localized uh, virtual cycle agrees with the usual uh, Baron von Pecky. Virtual cycle. Okay. So in other words, uh, these two results together say that uh, these enumerative GLSM invariants uh, we, we constructed uh, specialized to Gromov, both Gromov Witten and FJRW. And, um, but at that time we did not prove this was a cohomological field theory. On the other hand, we have the following result. Um, the general GLSM invariants that we constructed form a cohomological field theory. 
Okay. So uh, those are the results. Uh, and what I'll focus on is what, what these actually are. What are these GLSM invariants? How did we define them? Uh, I'll give you the flavor of that mostly in the next 30 minutes. All right. David, there was a question in the chat that is- Oh, sorry. Just a moment. Okay. Uh, does Favero Kim's definition agree with Fon Jarvis Ruan's definition in the narrow sector? Melissa, that's a very good question. Uh, I, I don't believe we proved that. So we actually, uh, I believe, I thought that there was, okay, so you're, you're asking about the, for the general GLSM invariance, then we don't uh, know much. Uh, if you want to get back quantum singularities, then you can specialize this construction to, uh, to the convex hybrid model case to get gromov witten and quantum singularity FJRW. But we, uh, we didn't compare to FJR's narrow sector case. Thank you. Thank you for that question. Uh, so, so what is your expectation? Expectation is yes, <laughs> but uh, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. I mean, there's there's also I, I think you know you have to go through the fact that uh, their state spaces is, is defined I think slightly differently. It's the you know this this relative cohomology space. You have to use this pairing with relative cohomology, which compares you to Hodge classes. And so uh, there would be some, some additional words you'd have to say, I think, even to compare the two. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I remind you, um, that of the general construction, uh, so the, I talked about this yesterday. So in the general construction, um, the state space H, which was a part of the data of the cohomological field theory was defined as the hypercohomology, hypercohomology of the, um, this was called the, Twisted Hodge complex. Of this inertia stack. So uh, I remind you here that the twisted Hodge complex for some uh, space chi here is 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 this uh, exterior algebra on the cotangent bundle, but instead of uh, having the Durham or the Hodge differential, we have this, uh, we twist it by this wedge DW. So DW is an element of this Taylor defer, uh, of this sheaf of Taylor differentials. This takes one to DW, it's a global element, in fact, because W is a global section. And then I can keep wedging with it. So, you know, this, this chi is not proper. This is some global function. And then uh, this state space also had a Kuna formula, which we uh, use freely. So uh, if I take the R tensor power, it's really just the cohomology of the R power of this image. So. And uh, yeah. So uh, just to describe to you how, how you, um, get a virtual cycle in this setting, I just wanna do a basic observation to start with, okay? So the observation in general is if I have alpha in the twisted cohomology of DW and beta in the twisted cohomology of DV, so I just have two different global functions. Excuse me. 
w comma v are both global functions on chi. Okay. Then the wedge product actually lands in uh, D of the sum. Okay. You can just check this that this is closed, right? If I take alpha beta and I wedge it with DVW, I get uh, this expansion. Uh, this, this is zero since alpha is closed. This is zero since beta is closed. So the, the closed form actually lands in the sum, D of the sum. All right. We'll come back to that uh, in a moment. So um, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, re I'll return to that in a moment. So now here's the basics of uh, the construction. Okay, so I'm going to define MGRD. So I'm just giving you an overview right now. So MGRD is going to be the moduli of quasi maps into uh, this GLSM, which I put the data like this now. Okay. So this is basically equals the moduli space. of what's called LG quasi maps. I'll give you a little more information on what those are in a moment. C, landing in the critical locus of this function. So the zero set of the partial derivatives of this function inside this vector space, mod, the, the orbit space of this vector space. All right, so the idea of the construction is first, this thing is horribly singular, okay? So, uh, but it is proper by a result of von Jarvis and Ruan. So uh, we're first gonna embed this in a, in a smooth space. So we take this MGR bar, RD and we embed it into some smooth space of U of G R T. So this is smooth. And we want this embedding to be compatible with the natural uh, maps that we have. So we have an evaluation map. We call that we had a, an evaluation map by taking uh, the mark, mark. For each marking, we have an evaluation map. If we take, uh, by just taking a curve to uh, the, the, the value of, of, of the function of this map on the marking. So you have a P in here, you take it to its value. So that gives you a map for each marking. So I can take all of those markings as a vector and I get a map to the rth power of this GIT quotient. Uh, on the other hand, we have a forgetful map, which just forgets all of this data and just remembers the curve. So that just lands me in the moduli space of curves of genus G with R markings. So uh, we don't just want to embed this randomly into some smooth space. We want it to be compatible with these two maps. So we need extensions. Of these maps, so so uh, all all this uh, this commutes uh, and this commutes. All right. So uh, what we want to do is construct a virtual cycle inside the twisted cohomology of this space. So we construct a virtual cycle in twisted. Hodge cohomology of UGRD. 
So we'll call that M G R D virtual. So it lives in this twisted cohomology, but it's actually the twisted cohomology supported on this nice MRD. So it it, rem it remembers this space, but it's in some kind of smooth setting where I have uh, this cotangent bundle, this cotangent complex, this Hodge complex. And here, a little more space. Here, uh, I'm going to wedge with the um, extension of W. So I have W here, sum to the R, R copies of W basically, W on each factor is mapping to C. So uh, my function on this space is ev twiddle followed by this W. D like that. So sorry if that's uh, I'm just taking D of this this function on this space, and I, I want to find some kind of special cycle in here, and that's going to determine these maps uh, gamma GRD. I'll tell you in a moment how that. So uh, let me just say a little more about, well, actually, let me start by telling you how that works. Uh, so here I have this twisted cohomology. I'll just put UGRD rather than put the complex, I'll just put the, the function. Drop the wedge. I'll just put the space in the function. It's the twisted cohomology with of this space in this function. Um, and I have a pullback map. From the twisted cohomology of this inertia stuff. Yeah, actually, I think I, I made a little mistake. If, if you're careful with the data, that the, these evaluation maps actually land here in the symmetric stuff. Okay, and then um, so uh, then I can go over by this virtual cycle. So I can I can wedge, as we described earlier. You can wedge with this virtual cycle. Uh, I should put a negative sign here. So I wedge with this virtual cycle. And remember that wedging adds the two functions. So if this one has a negative sign and this one has a positive sign, they cancel, which is great because that means we just land in the hypercohomology. of um, UGRD of the Hodge complex with zero on UGRD. And it's supported here on this compact moduli space. And in fact, we said last time, uh, 
we, as we discussed last time, the hypercohomology of the twisted uh, Hodge complex with the zero function is just the usual cohomology of the space. And uh, I, I'm not saying too much about, it's also, it's, it's cohomology with supports on this compact space, uh, but I, I'm not saying too much about that. Okay, and then great, because now we have the usual forgetful map. Well, using Poincaré duality, which landscape? Okay. So this is going around this diagram is my definition of my GLS M invariance. That's how I get this collection of map. So it all amounts to finding this virtual cycle. And now uh, to find this virtual cycle, we follow the idea of uh, Polish Chuck Vantrobe. So you want to find uh, a virtual matrix factorization. called kappa GRD on this pair, UGRD with this function. And then uh, due to a construction of, uh, a construction of Kim and Polish Chuck, the churn character of this matrix factorization lands here. So uh, we can define, to, to define the, the virtual cycle, we take the Todd class of some B, this is uh, to be defined. This is just some kind of rescaling if you like. And the, the important part is here, the churn character. Okay, of oh, this, this is some kind of, yeah, fix of this thing. Okay, so, Basically, from the churn character, from, from this virtual factorization, uh, we can define this virtual cycle, this cycle in here, which gives us our cohomological field theory. So it's really kind of lifted to the category in some sense uh, by constructing this thing. Questions? Good, thanks. All right. Uh, so I'll try to talk about this uh, kind of, uh, don't have a ton of time here. So I'll talk about this somewhat briefly. So what goes into uh, LG quasi map, what is this moduli space of LG quasi maps to the GIT quotient? We need to understand that. So I'll just say quickly that you have a curve. Uh, you have markings. You have uh, a principal gamma bundle. And uh, you have an isomorphism, a distinguished isomorphism from the associated line bundle corresponding to that character chi from the GLSM data to um, the log canonical bundle on the curve. And you have a section, sorry, this is not fairly easy. We'll see. Oops. 
What just happened? Sorry about that. And uh, you have a section of this vector bundle. So that's the data. In some sense, this moduli space is just collections of the of these pieces of data. But you have to add stability. So it's really open in, in, in this collection of data by adding stability, of course. Okay, so you put some stability conditions on these curves. That gives you an open subset of this collection of, of instead of all these collections of data, okay? So this is some big, uh, big stack, and this is some open. Substack. So the trick, so if I go back here, I had this U, right? So the trick is throw out U. and then put it back in, <laughs> okay? So you throw out U, you consider uh, this moduli space, which only consists of this data. Over this, you still have the universal curve and the universal principal bundle, and also a vector bundle, which comes from this construction. This is a vector bond. Universal vector bundle, and this is universal curve. This is also universal. Over this moduli space here. So, uh, you can take the derived push forward. This vector bundle is a sheaf, locally free sheaf here on C. You can take its derived push forward. Uh, and since this is a, this is a one dimensional, uh, the fibers are curves here. Right? The fiber is this, the fiber over this point is this curve. So this is a map of dimension one. If you push forward, you'll have uh, a, a zero cohomology and a first cohomology. So um, you take R, P e star, I star of the spectral bundle. All this speed. Okay, so you take R pi star of the universal vector bundle. Now, notice that the kernel is pi star uh, V, the kernel of V, and U is a section of V use a section of V uh, restricted to this data at this point. Okay, so if I want to if I want to get you back. Is again, then it lies inside the total space of A as the sections which are in the kernel, the kernel of D is inside here. So it's really, this is like the, this is like the kernel of D inside here. And the precise way to say it is that 
uh, you have the total space of A. And you have the total space of B, the pullback of B. And you have this section beta. This, and this is the zero section of beta where uh, beta is D composed with the tautological section. Okay. okay. So a uh, summary is that I can throw out you, I can get it back as the zero set of, of some uh, section of some bundle on this space. All right, I see I'm short on time. So I'm going to skip to the filled in notes. Uh, and just summarize uh, quickly the rest of the construction. So here, um, here we had uh, this bundle, AB, kernel of D was roughly uh, where the extra data came from. Um, and now, UGR, so, so UGRD is actually, this is actually a smooth stack. This is the vector bundle on it. So this is smooth. And UGRD is just going to be defined as some open substack of the total space of A. So this is great. Everything is smooth now. Okay. And then this Z of B is singular, but it's inside here. Okay. And this, so now I've embedded this data, this LG quasi map data into this smooth space. And in fact, uh, I need to go further. I haven't used the function W. So this is just the moduli space of maps to the GIT quotient. To use the function W, I have to take, uh, I wanna take the zero section of a natural cosection alpha which comes from W. And that will give me this compact moduli space where my virtual cycle is supposed to live, okay? So the idea going back to Polish Chuck Vaintro, I'm almost out of time, is to construct a matrix factorization, it's supposed to be K, uh, is to construct a matrix factorization, um, that contains both the information of alpha and this was beta. So we have a section and a cosection of a bundle, then we can actually in general to get what's called a casual matrix factorization. And the casual matrix factorization will be supported on, the in, on both the zero locus of alpha and the intersection of the zero locus of alpha and the zero locus of beta. So in this case, that's this nice compact moduli space of maps to the critical locus that you want. So we started here. We threw this data back in by taking the total space of A. We had some nice smooth space in there. Then we wanted to cut it back down to here. We need to cut by the zero locus of alpha and the zero locus of beta. To do that, you wanna construct a casual matrix factorization. This is what happened in all previous constructions. So you construct this thing. And now I re remind you that the churn character of this thing times the Todd class of this B is will be the virtual cycle. So uh, the problem was, um, uh, the problem was that uh, this alpha uh, basically doesn't exist globally. This alpha doesn't exist globally in general. So in previous constructions, you could use certain properties of the moduli space, projectivity over, the app, over an affine was enough to construct this alpha locally. But in general, uh, this scheme need not even be separated uh, and, and that was a problem. So uh, this alpha really only could be uh, discussed as a class in this URGR, it's a class in, it, in the hypercohomology of the Kajul complex on beta. All right. 
So uh, the solution was to find a matrix factorization, which locally looks like this visual matrix factorization. So this alpha always exists at all locally on this space, uh, but it doesn't glue. So, but the matrix factorization can actually exist globally and restrict locally to the casual matrix factorization on alpha. Uh, so I'm out of time. I'll say quickly. Uh, so what we did was we realized that the um, the casual factorization is a special case of if I take a sheaf of CDGAs, commutative differential graded algebra. So alpha in the casual case is the casual complex on beta is a sheaf of CDGAs, for example. In fact, for any sheaf of CDGAs, if alpha is a section of A minus one and D of alpha equals W, you get a matrix factorization of W by taking the differential on that sheaf and taking the multiple and adding it to the multiplication. So this is just this, this casual factorization were just a special case of this construction. This is the type of factorization we defined. So uh, briefly, I'm sorry that this is going really quickly, but I'm, I'm out of time. So to realize uh, out this co-cycle, you do the usual thing, which is you actually realize it as a hypercohomology class. So you want to replace uh, this kappa of beta by a gamma acyclic complex so that alpha is actually an element, right? So, uh, but you need to retain the CDGA structure. So on any sheaf of a billion groups, <laughs> you can take the go-to-mo resolution. That will give you a gamma acyclic, and it's actually a co-simplicial sheaf of CDGAs. Okay, so you take you replace kappa of beta by its go to mo resolution. If that's not a sh that's a co-simplicial sheaf of CDGAs. It's not a sheaf of CDGAs. So there's a standard construction to get a sheaf of CDGAs called the Tom Sullivan construction. So from a co-simplicial sheaf of CDGAs. Okay. So this whole thing lands you in uh, gives you a gamma acyclic replacement of kappa of b so this is this is a quasi isomorphism okay but alpha honestly lives as a class in here so alpha is actually an element of this sheaf of cdgas that means we can take uh we can take exactly uh the same thing we did for the casual factorization with this alpha so so you get this differential which is d plus dot alpha D plus dot alpha here. And that gives you a matrix factorization, which locally recovers exactly the casual factorization. It's locally, this is quasi isomorphic. Well, this is actually globally quasi isomorphic to this. And if you look, uh, but there's a, there's when alpha exists locally, <laughs> then, then, then this differential restricts that to the alpha, which locally exists. Okay, so this is the total construction. Uh, so I'm out of time. The summary is, um, you started here, inside, uh, it, you, you added the total space of A to recover this U data. You added stability. If you intersect the zero section with this stability, you get the moduli space of maps to the GIT quotient. And then the zero set of alpha was the moduli of maps to the critical locus. You took kappa, okay, which was a matrix factorization on this space, okay? And the Todd class times the churn character was the virtual cycle. And then you could define exactly the GLSM invariance by taking, uh, this should be pulled back.
pull back, cap with this virtual cycle and push forward. So that's the that's the whole construction and, and that's where I'll end. Thank you. Thanks very much.